I've been watching the Disney Junior show Doc McStuffins. I know it's in vogue right now for YouTubers to do three-hour video essays about children's media properties, but I can only stomach about three minutes of joyful innocence. The show follows Dottie McStuffins, aka Doc, a seven-year-old girl who provides medical services to toys from a shed in her backyard. The toys come to life when Doc activates her magic stethoscope, but this is kept secret from everyone in Doc's life. If another human walks into the room, Doc tells the toys to go stuffed. Toys, go stuffed! The human toy hierarchy in this show is fascinating to me. One of the strangest aspects is that a few seasons in, Doc opens a veterinary branch for toy pets, but many of the toys treated at the regular branch of the clinic are also animals but not pets. Like some of the main characters are Lammy the Lamb and Stuffy the Dragon and Haley the Hippo, and those are all just regular people, I guess, who go to the regular doctor's office, but Findo, the robotic puppy, barks, so he's a pet and he's gotta go to the vet. Get your pet to the vet! It's not really about species, it's a social category. The show has some wild world building in general. It's not Toy Story rules where the toys come to life when there are no people around, but it's also not Calvin and Hobbes rules where the toys are ambiguously imaginary. For the first three seasons, it seems like it might all be make-believe. Doc's mom is also a doctor, so maybe this is Doc's way of playing with her toys inspired by the glimpses she's had of her mom's job. But no, the toys are definitely actually alive, and we know this because in season three, episode 24, Five, it's revealed that Doc was given the magic stethoscope by Grandma McStuffins, and then in Season 4, Episode 1, we learned that Grandma McStuffins can also use her magic stethoscope to make toys come alive. The skill skips a generation, but toy healthcare has been a McStuffins family trade for centuries. There is something disturbing about the fact that Grandma McStuffins gave a seven-year-old the responsibility of being the sole medical provider for a large population with absolutely no guidance on how to handle it, while keeping the whole thing secret from her parents? The life and death of these toys is in Doc's hands. But she does a great job. She takes good care of all the toys. I can only wish that the US healthcare system was as strong as Doc's toy healthcare system. I watch Doc McStuffins, and I see her fixing a jack-in-the-box that can't pop, and my first thought is, does this jack-in-the-box have insurance? What's the copay on this? Insert Cinema Sins ding here. In that flashback to the first time that Doc did her doctoring, Stuffy the Dragon has the same thought. Do you take insurance? But the toys quickly learn that they don't need medical insurance. They don't have to worry about copays or deductibles or hidden costs or debt. Doc McStuffins provides their healthcare for free. Somehow, the US healthcare system feels even more absurd and nonsensical than the healthcare system of the magic talking toy show. The three minutes of joyful innocence are up. We're talking about healthcare now. Our for profit health healthcare system in the US is convoluted and difficult to navigate. And for many people, there are huge financial barriers to receiving care. A 2022 survey found that 43% of working age adults were not adequately insured. And 46% of respondents said they had skipped or delayed care because of the cost. I'm making this video for the Project for Awesome, an annual event on YouTube in which people make videos to help raise money for various organizations. And this year I'm supporting the Berkeley Free Clinic, a community healthcare clinic in Berkeley, California that provides healthcare services free of charge to people rather than toys. The Berkeley Clinic arose out of the activist movements of the 1960s, initially forming to provide care to protesters who were injured by police. They operate on a belief that healthcare and healthcare knowledge should be accessible to all, not tied to profit or the ability to pay. The clinic offers services like medical screening, STI treatment, peer counseling, and dental care, and they help people navigate the healthcare system, assisting them in enrolling or using insurance, and helping them find local resources to get the help they need. Every year, the Project for Awesome gives out grants to organizations voted on by viewers. If you want to help support the work that the clinic does, consider voting for them. Voting is open starting at noon EST this Friday, February 17th, so if you're watching this video before then, maybe set a reminder on your phone or something. And if you're able, you can also consider donating to the clinic directly. There's a link in the description. Vote. Donate. Stream Doc McStuffins available now.